and uh, okay so bismillah rahman rahim okay so let me tell you guys the paper layout first okay how stuff is gonna work in a2 chemistry okay so basically you can see all right so this is the paper pattern this is the paper pattern we have a paper four and a paper five paper four is the major paper it's the paper that has the greatest weightage in your grade in your a level grade okay approximately like 40 percent of your grade of your a level grade depends upon this paper why because it has the greatest number of marks okay 100 marks and two hour time period and eight to nine questions are there these are these are the questions similar to your paper two in as which you did in as okay but a bit more difficult okay the difference is that they are a bit more extensive a bit longer that's why the time period is also greater okay and threshold is also pretty good so basically this is the major paper where you are gonna focus your strengths paper five is a paper that is similar to paper three okay it uses the knowledge of p3 remember p3 the practical paper the knowledge of p3 is applied over here it is uh, applied in paper five okay the knowledge is applied in paper five so knowledge is going to be a paper based question paper uh, or two to three questions are there and 30 marks paper is uh, is going to be 30 marks and one hour and 15 minutes of the time period right let's move on Okay, now a few this uh, syllabus outline. Okay, we have energetics. In energetics, we are going to do the bond neighbor cycle, group two chemistry, entropy, electrode potentials, kinetics, equilibria, having all these constants in it. Okay, KC, KP, these are the ones which you've already done in AS. KA is also an equilibrium constant of acids. KB is an equilibrium constant for bases. KW is an equilibrium constant for water. KSP is a, also an equilibrium constant. KPC is also an equilibrium constant. Buffers, pH calculation, and all this stuff is gonna be covered in great detail in this chapter, equilibria. And then we have polymers, inorganic chemistry, uh, which has transition metals, and group two chemistry, again, certain part of group two lies over here in inorganic chemistry, and pretty much of it is similar to the AS chemistry. So you guys should have a, a firm grip of your AS in organic chemistry for your A2 or inorganic chemistry as well. Okay, then we have our organic. Organic, the first chapter is benzene and then nitrogen compounds. This is something very similar to uh, the stuff that you've done in your O levels, the amides you've done in O levels and uh, amino acids. This is gonna be relatively new. And acyl chlorides is gonna be new for you guys. Carboxylic acids you are familiar with. Uh, polymers and then condensation polymers and addition polymers and something stuff like that then we have analytical chemistry in which we have the infrared spectroscopy mass spectroscopy and then proton nmr carbon 13 nmr chromatography electrophoresis and then kpc kpc is an equilibrium constant again which is actually used over here in separation techniques okay this is also something that we are gonna look at in great detail later on okay so this is basically the entire syllabus of A2. Okay, it looks uh, as if it's uh, quite small, not too extensive, but trust me, guys, this is far more extensive than your AS. Okay, so we'll need a lot more dedication and hard work in order to complete this in time, along with the past papers. Okay, and guys, in A2, we are gonna do past papers at the end of each lecture, at the end of each class. I mean, at the end of each chapter because we've got enough time to cover past papers alongside the uh, the syllabus as well okay now yes yes topical all right so now today's topic moving on to today's uh, topic energetics basically lattice energy okay this is something new for you guys okay it, it uh, resembles the as chemistry topic of Hess's cycle Hess's law so you are gonna need the knowledge of Hess's law over here. Remember Hess's law, it was an energy cycle, which was used to calculate the enthalpy changes of uh, reaction, which were actually not possible under lab conditions, okay? So basically this chapter deals with uh, knowledge from that uh, chapter. Now, some important terms and important definitions that you guys are supposed to know from AS, of course, 
before you can you can do this chapter okay now the first definition is enthalpy change of formation or i should rather say delta hf not standard enthalpy change of formation okay guys do you remember the definition of standard enthalpy change of formation from your as knowledge uh, it is actually the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions of 25 degrees celsius for atmospheric pressure and one mole per dm cube concentration all right so this is basically the enthalpy change of such a reaction is going to be the enthalpy change of formation of this product of nacl in this case okay so this is something you've done in as so what if, if uh, i had a reaction like this magnesium reacting with chlorine and magnesium is a solid and chlorine is a gas which they are uh, these are the standard states under standard conditions so they'll give you mgcl2 solid right under standard conditions of 25 degrees celsius one atmospheric pressure and uh, one mole per dm cube concentration when the concentration doesn't apply over here because we don't have solutions but see one mole of the product is formed so again the enthalpy change of this reaction is also going to be the enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride mgcl2 now if we had two products on the product side if we had two moles of the product then the enthalpy change of that reaction would have been twice the enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride in both the reactants would have uh, doubled as well and so in this case the enthalpy change of formation is gonna the enthalpy change of this reaction is gonna be twice the enthalpy change of formation right so guys is enthalpy change of formation revised is it clear please confirm so that i could move forward Hussain? yes sir right all right i'll repeat the last part basically over here i just told you that if uh, uh let's say we've got magnesium reacting with chlorine forming magnesium chloride okay and enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride okay this is what you all you already know but if I multiply the entire equation by two, that would mean that we've got now two moles of the product, okay? Two moles of the product. Two moles of the product would mean that the enthalpy change of this reaction is gonna be twice the enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride. So this is what I was telling you because it is actually the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in the standard states under standard conditions. Uh, Hassan, do you get this now? What we have two different compounds. No, uh, actually, for two different compounds, we cannot have enthalpy change of formation. Actually, okay. If we have two different compounds, then no. Sorry. Okay. Only we are gonna deal with uh, situations in which we have only one compound, or we are gonna deal in situations in which we are gonna label the enthalpy changes with respect to that compound. Okay, we don't need, we are not gonna have two compounds in such stuff. Now, enthalpy change of atomization, this is also something you've done in AS, and I should rather say standard enthalpy change of atomization. If this is uh, the standard enthalpy change of atomization, then that would mean the reaction is performed under standard conditions. Okay, standard conditions you guys already know. 25 degrees celsius one atmospheric pressure and in case of solutions the concentration of one mole per dm cube anyways these are the standard conditions now what is enthalpy change of atomization enthalpy change of atomization as the name suggests atomization atom so the enthalpy change when one mole of an atom is formed from its elements in the standard sorry from its uh, elements in the gaseous state okay one mole of gaseous atoms are formed one mole of the gaseous atom if is formed from its element under standard conditions but the element must also be in the gaseous state the enthalpy change of that reaction is going to be the enthalpy change of atomization of this compound that is this of this element of this atom that has been produced okay in this case chlorine okay so now this is enthalpy change of atomization so for example if i had magnesium solid okay 
and now if this magnesium solid uh, okay if this guys uh, let me correct myself this element is not always necessarily in the gaseous stage okay it can be in any standard state it can be in the its standard state okay it it has to be in its standard state if for example in this case chlorine is a gas magnesium is a solid but the product that we get must be an atom a separate atom and must be gaseous in nature okay for example over here if magnesium solid if we heat it provided some energy it will produce magnesium atoms okay in the gaseous state can any one of you tell me what forces are being overcome in this reaction what forces what forces are we breaking in magnesium solid to convert it into magnesium gas Hussain? any idea no sir uh, actually this is a metal Hassan. this is a metal so it contains metallic bonds we are breaking metallic bonds okay not the intermolecular forces intermolecular forces exist only in the molecular compounds okay in this case again we've got one mole of, a, of an atom produced and from its element in its standard state under standard conditions again the enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be the enthalpy change of atomization of magnesium similarly if we had oxygen oxygen okay now oxygen is an element what's its standard state or standard uh, state under standard condition it's a gas right it's a diatomic gas if you provide some energy to that to this ga gas over here again the molecule will dissociate and this time we'll get two atoms of oxygen right so if we have two atoms two gases atoms of oxygen then in this case what's going to be the enthalpy change is it going to be the enthalpy change of atomization of oxygen or is it going to be twice the enthalpy change of atomization of oxygen any suggestion Hussain? sir twice yes twice because we've got two moles of the gases atoms on the product side okay so this was enthalpy change of atomization the enthalpy change when one mole of a gaseous atom is formed from its elements under standard conditions okay from its element okay can be magnesium can be oxygen can be chlorine can be any element if we are breaking it down into its standard uh, state then in that case we are actually uh, providing it enthalpy change of atomization all right now if we talk okay in this case we we, uh, we broke oxygen molecule to oxygen atoms in this case we actually broke the oxygen oxygen covalent bonds okay not the intermolecular forces again i'm stressing it's not the intermolecular forces that have been broken because the state is the same but rather it's the oxygen oxygen covalent bonds that have been broken and giving you two oxygen atoms all right since you need to calculate the enthalpy change of this reaction the enthalpy change of atomization of oxygen all you need to do is just calculate uh, calculate the, the bond energy. The bond energy is going to be twice the enthalpy change of atomization of oxygen. The bond energy of oxygen is going to be twice the enthalpy change of uh, oxygen, right? Because this is the energy that we gave to produce two atoms, two gases atoms of oxygen. And so now we, if we divide the bond energy by two, we'll get our enthalpy change of atomization of oxygen. So this was enthalpy change of atomization. A quick recap from AS again. Moving on to ionization energy, guys. Remember ionization energy? We did this in great detail. And energy, the enthalpy change when one mole of electron is removed from an at from an atom in its gaseous state to form one mole of gases, one positive ion. Right. Or I should rather say it is the energy needed to remove one mole of if, for example, this is your atom and this is the valence electron to so the energy that I provide to this valence electron okay valence is important in case of ionization energy it's the valence electron that we are dealing with energy that we provide to this valence electron to remove it from this gaseous atom and form once the electron has been removed 
what will what charge will this gaseous atom attain it will get a positive charge okay to form one mole of gaseous one positive ion okay this is called anthel uh, ionization energy or enthalpy change of ionization all right so this is also a term that you guys need to know for this chapter right so so far we've revised three enthalpies we revised enthalpy change of formation we revised enthalpy change of atomization and we revised enthalpy change of ionization or ionization energy okay formation is when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements under standard conditions in their standard states atomization is when one mole of gaseous atom is formed from its element under standard conditions okay and ionization energy or enthalpy change of ionization is when one mole of electron is removed from one mole of gaseous atom to form one mole of gaseous one positive ion okay so in that case you have your enthalpy change of ionization or ionization energy right now a new term electron affinity electron affinity is actually the reverse of ionization energy in ionization energy what we did was we took a gaseous atom we provided it with some energy and we removed an electron from it forming an m positive ion right the enthalpy change associated with this reaction was the enthalpy change of ionization electron affinity on the other hand is actually the reverse it is the enthalpy change when a one mole of a gaseous atom it gains an electron it gains one mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous one minus ions okay or one mole of univalent negatively charged ion so the enthalpy change of this reaction is the uh, electron affinity and in this case like like in case of uh, like ionization energy electron affinity also has first electron affinity second electron affinity and third electron affinity and so on okay this is called first electron affinity because the product that you get gains a charge of minus 1 in this case okay its magnitude is 1 like ionization energy in this case was also the first ionization energy because you removed one electron to get a charge of plus 1 okay so this is actually an elect uh, electron affinity of this reaction now first electron affinity is when one mole of electrons i have written it down over here guys the definition of electron affinity is important okay this is asked in a2 ionization energy is not that frequently asked but electron affinity since this is a part of a2 syllabus so it is asked and this is the definition that's written over here okay the first electron affinity is when one mole of electrons is added to one mole of gases atoms to form one mole of univalent negatively charged gases ions okay and this is how you are going to represent it uh, in in the form of an equation right so the ele first electron affinity in this case of chlorine now second and third electron affinities and so on okay now guys remember one thing this first electron affinity is generally exothermic the reason why it's exothermic is because you are actually adding an electron to an atom right electron is added and this atom is positively charged electron is negatively charged you've actually established an electrostatic force of attraction between the electron and the atom so this electrostatic force of attraction the establishment of an electron electrostatic force of attraction is actually like a bond forming between them right this is just like a bond forming and you guys know that bond forming reactions are generally exothermic reactions okay but here's an interesting fact second ionization energy sorry second electron affinity is always always endothermic it's never exothermic it's always endothermic any suggestion why anyone okay when is a reaction endothermic when bonds are being formed or when bonds are being broken bonds are being formed right bonds forming reaction is endothermic now if bonds are being formed that would mean uh 
No, sorry, 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 sorry. I just not formed. Actually, uh, reactions are endothermic when bonds are broken. Okay, you actually provide some energy to break the bonds, to break certain amounts, certain bonds. So now, if you are providing energy to break the bonds, that would mean that the enthalpy change is exothermic. Now, in this case, in case of second electron affinity, what happens is that you already have a negatively charged ion, okay, M minus one, and to this negatively charged ion, you are adding an electron, which is also negatively charged. Both of them are negatively charged species, and since they are negatively charged species, since they are like charges, so repulsion occurs between the like charges, right? So in order to overcome this repulsion, we need to provide a large amount of energy. We need to provide energy. So since energy is absorbed in this reaction in order to overcome this repulsion, therefore the second ionization energy is always and always endothermic. Okay guys, did you get, get this? Why second ionization energy is always endothermic? Yes sir. Okay, moving on. Then finally, A2 stuff. Born Haber cycle and lattice energy. I'll come to the Born Haber cycle in a bit. You didn't understand about the first. Okay, just a moment, Hassan, I'll go back. Okay, the first electron affinity over here is when you are adding an electron to an atom, to a gaseous atom. Okay, so now if you are adding an electron to a gaseous atom, that would mean that that electron is establishing. An electrostatic force of attraction with the nucleus of that atom right this establishment of electrostatic force of attraction is just like bond making bond forming right and since bond forming are all exothermic reaction that's why this is generally exothermic now do you get it okay now moving on Born Haber cycle, we'll just come to it after doing lattice energy. Okay, what is lattice energy? Lattice energy is also an enthalpy change. This is something you guys need to know. And by definition, it is the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic compound, one mole of solid ionic crystalline, this crystalline word is optional though, okay? Solid ionic crystalline compound forms from its elements under standard conditions. From its, uh, actually not elements, from its gaseous ions. So moment, not elements. From its gaseous ions under standard conditions. So for example, sodium chloride formation. If you have sodium ions in the gaseous form and you have chloride ions in the gaseous form, they are oppositely charged, right? So obviously attraction will occur in between them and then combine together to form sodium chloride solids, one mole, right? One mole of sodium chloride solid. Enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be the lattice energy of NaCl. Okay, so now what is lattice energy? The enthalpy change when one mole of a solid compound, okay, solid has a mark, solid ionic crystalline compound is formed from its gaseous ions under standard conditions. The standard conditions stay the same 25 degrees Celsius, one atmospheric pressure, 
then the enthalpy change is called the lattice energy of that product of that compound. Okay, lattice. I've also written the definition over here. It is the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic compound is formed from its separate gases ions under standard conditions. Okay, and these are a few examples of how lattice energy can be represented. It, this is actually L. Okay, it is not C. This is L. Okay. So lithium ion combining with fluoride ions in their gaseous state forming lithium fluoride, okay? In this case, it's gonna be the lattice energy of lithium fluoride. And similarly, uh, lattice energy of sodium chloride, this is Cl, lattice energy of magnesium chloride, okay? Although we have a two over here in chlorine, but this doesn't affect our value. This is still the lattice energy of magnesium chloride. Because this lattice energy depend upon the magnitude of the product. If we have only one mole of this product, then that means that we have only one mole of the lattice energy, okay? And in this case, lattice energy of magnesium chloride, okay? Now, guys, an interesting question. Is lattice energy gonna be exothermic or endothermic? Any suggestion? Hassan, any suggestion? Endo or exo? We are forming exo. bonds, yeah? yeah exo. Exo, okay, exo. Why exo? So bonds are being formed. Yes, exactly. Bonds are being formed and no bonds are broken. Okay, so if no bonds are broken, that would mean that uh, this is a completely exothermic reaction. Okay, it's a completely exothermic reaction. No energy is being absorbed, but uh, only energy is being released because bonds are formed between the oppositely charged ions. Okay. And the more negative the lattice energy, this is an important statement, guys. Uh, the stronger the ionic bonds are, and I should, I can say that the more stable the ionic product is, okay, the greater its stability. If you guys review your AS again, remember we used to relate the stability with the exothermic reaction. Exothermic reactions generally have more stable products than the endothermic reactions. Reason? Because its products were at a lower energy level. Okay, this was a statement that we used to state during the AS. So guys, over here as well, the more negative means the more exothermic the lattice energy is, the stronger the ionic bonds are, and the more stable the product is. This is actually a, a concept that has been tested frequently in the past papers. Okay guys, so you guys should know. Uh, this is important if you do, didn't get it, so you can ask again, okay? But this is an important concept, okay? The more negative the lattice energy, the more stable the product. So in this case, in these three equations over here, uh, lithium fluoride, sodium chloride, and magnesium chloride, which of the three is most stable? Anyone? Which one of the three uh, compounds is the most stable compound? Uh, magnesium chloride, yes, correct. It's magnesium chloride because its uh, lattice energy is the most negative. Yeah, all right. Now, moving on to the next slide. Oh, before we move on to the next slide, let me clarify what Born Haber cycle really means. All right, so far, we've, uh, I'll just end this uh, slideshow. Okay, guys, so far we've discussed a few terms, a few actually uh, enthalpy changes from AS. We discussed the enthalpy change of formation. We discussed the enthalpy change of atomization. We also discussed the ionization energy, electron affinity, and finally lattice energy. Now, if we draw out a Hesse's cycle that combines all of these terms together. If we draw out a Hess's cycle, uh, you guys remember what has a cycle is, right? Has a cycle is actually a cycle. Uh, it is a law of conservation of energy and it is a relationship of different enthalpy changes of different reactions. Now, has a cycle, if we draw out a has a cycle that combines or that associates the enthalpy change of formation, the enthalpy change of uh, sometimes the enthal yeah, enthalpy change of atomization, enthalpy change of 
uh, ionization and enthalpy change of electron affinity basically ea delta h ea or electron affinity and the lattice energy if we draw out a hasis cycle that interconnects all these enthalpy changes such a hasis cycle is known as a born haber cycle okay so born haber cycle is not anything new for you guys it's the old hasis cycle from as but it is a hasis cycle that interconnects all of these different enthalpy changes together right and now i'm also going to draw out the hasis cycle for you guys so that it could things could get a bit clearer uh, the definition of von haber cycle is right over here i've written it down a von haber cycle is a cycle uh, a hasis cycle that gives relationship between okay i've missed out the term hasis but you could add it over here. It is a has a cycle that gives a relationship between enthalpy change of formation of an ionic solid uh, crystalline compound and the enthalpy changes in the stages of its formation. All right. So basically, enthalpy change of formation. This is something that we've already discussed. Okay. Uh, and I told you that all the different enthalpies. So it's the delta H F that we are talking about over there, and all the different enthalpy changes that are associated in its formation. Basically, these. Okay, over here. I'll shift to the whiteboard now. Right, so let's uh, draw out the von Haber cycle of magnesium of sodium chloride. Sodium solid, when combines with chlorine gas, it forms an ACL solid. Right. Let's balance it out half moles of chlorine gas. Guys, what is going to be the enthalpy change of this reaction? Anyone? Out of the five that I just listed, enthalpy change of formation, enthalpy change of atomization, etc. It's going to be enthalpy change of formation. Yes, correct. And enthalpy change of formation of sodium chloride, to be more specific. All right. This is the enthalpy change of formation of sodium chloride. And what about the lattice energy of sodium chloride? If I write down sodium ions in the gaseous state, if combined with chloride ions in the gaseous state to form sodium chloride solid state, one mole of sodium chloride in the solid state, then the enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be the enthalpy change of lattice, basically the lattice energy, right? And this is something that you've done in. A2. Okay, this is new for you guys. This is from AS, but this is from A2, right? And the definition of lattice energy is asked in A2 as well, okay? So the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic crystal ion compound is formed from its gaseous ions under standard conditions, okay? And you guys know what standard conditions are very well. 25 degrees Celsius, one atmospheric pressure. And one mole per dm cube concentration as well in case of solutions, all right? So this is lattice energy. Now, if I ask you, what's the standard state of sodium under standard conditions? So you guys are going to answer me that it's a solid, right? Okay, if it's a solid, then if I heat it, if I heat it and form sodium gaseous atoms, what's going to be the enthalpy change of this reaction? Is it going to be the enthalpy change of atomization of sodium? Right? because I'm getting one mole of gaseous sodium ions, so sodium atoms from its element under standard conditions, okay, in its standard state. This is enthalpy change of atomization of sodium. Now, if I remove an electron from sodium, if I remove an electron from sodium, I'll get sodium positive gaseous ions, okay? And the enthalpy change of this reaction is actually gonna be the first ionization energy of sodium. Right? Agreed, guys? You have any issue? Any issue so far? Okay. Now, we've got our uh, gaseous uh, sodium ion. We've got one of our reactants for this reaction, for this equation over here. 
we are actually trying to get this other reactant now. We've got our first reactant, the sodium gases ion right over here. Okay, this is what we needed to generate from the standard sodium. Okay, now we need to generate the other reactant. Chlorine, if we start out from its standard state, it's a gas under standard conditions, right? It will gain electron from sodium, okay? And if it gains electron from sodium, it will form chloride ions. Let me take half moles of chlorine molecule, okay? So now the equation is also balanced. So one half moles of chlorine molecule uh, will gain one mole of electron to form one mole of chloride gaseous ion. The enthalpy change of this reaction, what's going to be the enthalpy change of this reaction, guys? Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. I just missed uh, out a step. Before we go over there, first we need to break. First we need to, we need to atomize the chlorine molecule, okay? So now to atomize the chlorine molecule, we'll get two chlorine atoms in the gaseous state. Right, the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine. But since we have we've got two chlorine atoms, this is gonna be twice the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine. Okay. Now, once we have twice the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine, or to keep stuff simple, okay, just assume this is uh, twice the enthalpy. Okay, let's keep stuff simple. Let's not consider this twice. Let's divide the entire equation by two. Okay. So dividing the entire equation by two would mean that the equation can be balanced this way too, right? In this case, now the enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be the enthalpy change of atomization of the chlorine atoms, right? Now, once we've got our gaseous chlorine atoms, what's the next step? In case of sodium, to form positive ions, we removed an electron from sodium, right? In case of chlorine, to form a negative ion, chlorine has to gain an electron. And once it gains the electron, it forms a chloride ion in its gaseous state, right? In this case, what's going to be the enthalpy change of this reaction? Again, this is something new for you guys. This is A2 stuff. This is the electron affinity. The first electron affinity of chlorine. Yes. Okay, this is the first electron affinity of chlorine to form one mole of chloride ions. Now we've got chloride ions, we've got sodium ions. If we combine the two of them, we combine the two of them, we combine sodium and chloride, we'll get sodium chloride. Solid, okay, and if we get solid sodium chloride from gaseous ions, then what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Isn't this the lattice energy of sodium chloride? This is the lattice energy of sodium chloride. When one mole of a solid crystalline compound is formed from its gaseous ions under standard conditions, okay? So this is actually the pathway through which we get our crystalline solid associating the lattice energy. Okay, just a moment, uh, I'll get. So associating the lattice energy. So now all we need to do is just combine all these pathways in a single cycle to form a bond haver cycle. Okay, so this was the pathway through which we get our sodium chloride finally from the gaseous ions. Now, to illustrate this in a bond haver cycle, first of all, what you do is take sodium in a standard state, you take chlorine gas in a standard state and take exactly the same moles that you need to form one mole of the compound, okay? So sodium solid combines with a half moles of chlorine gas, okay? You show them by a horizontal line. When they both combine together, they form sodium chloride. Another horizontal line over here. And you label this line with sodium chloride solid, okay? Now the enthalpy chain, this arrow over here, this is actually the same arrow that you used to uh, use in the Hess's cycle, okay? This is also gonna be labeled with the enthalpy changes, but in this case, it's gonna be a bit more precise. This case is gonna be the enthalpy change of formation of sodium chloride. 
okay so now and why is this arrow facing downwards this is facing downwards because the sodium combining with chlorine forming sodium chloride this is actually an overall exothermic reaction okay so for exothermic reactions in born haber cycles the arrows point downwards this is this is a point to remember now the first step is convert this what's going to happen is that this sodium solid first it will atomize okay it will atomize to form sodium gaseous atoms okay so once sodium atomizes the enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be enthalpy change of atomization of sodium and standard right and this is something you have to label in von haber cycle and you have to draw another level over here as well and copy the chlorine as it is because we've done nothing to chlorine yet in this gaseous state then once sodium has been atomized then we are going to provide more energy to sodium so that it could lose its valence electron and transfer it to chlorine okay transfer its electron to chlorine so but before we uh, do that uh, just one minute guys. all right uh, simultaneously you can label over here as well you can atomize the chlorine molecule as well okay or you could just draw a separate arrow for it but to save space and make it a bit neater you can draw an, another simultaneous arrow over here labeling enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine okay and you'll get gaseous chlorine atoms as well so you've actually provided energy to sodium solid and chlorine gas forming their corresponding atoms and one mole of their atoms have been formed so their enthalpy changes are actually one moles of each of them okay now once you've got the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine and enthalpy change of atomization of sodium now you are going to provide more energy to this sodium so that it could lose its its electron so now if the sodium loses its electron it will form sodium positive ions okay and this is the electron over here plus you'll have the chlorine gases atoms side by side okay sodium has lost uh, lost its electron so what's going to be the enthalpy change of this reaction and guys do you notice something these arrows are all facing upwards why are they facing upwards because these are all endothermic reactions we are actually providing energy to convert it from solid to gas and then we are providing more energy to con to remove the electron from the sodium to form sodium positive ions okay now the enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be the first ie or the first ionization energy of na of sodium okay this is exactly how you are going to label it now once you've got these products extend this a bit to the right i told you guys this electron is going to be accepted by this chlorine uh, chlorine atom gaseous atom actually this is going to be the electron affinity but this electron affinity is the first electron affinity and i told you that first electron affinity is generally exothermic so chlorine gases atom will accept one electron and to show the exothermic reaction the arrow will point downwards this time and the products that you'll have as at the end of this arrow are going to be the sodium gases ions as it is along with the chloride gases ions and you've got the enthalpy change of this arrow is going to be the electron affinity or first electron affinity of chlorine okay forming chloride ions now once you've got your reactants that you need for lattice energy and you guys already know that lattice energy is a highly exothermic reaction or highly exothermic lattice energy is highly exothermic sodium gases ions combined with chloride gases ions to form sodium chloride it's going to be a highly exothermic reaction and you'll get your sodium chloride enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be delta h of lattice 
Why enthalpy change of lattice? Because you are forming one mole of the compound, solid compound, solid crystalline ionic compound from its gaseous ions under standard conditions. Okay, so this is how you form a complete Hess's cycle. Okay, this is how the Hess's cycle looks like. Okay. Any questions so far? I'll uh, okay. Our Bonhaber cycle. Actually, Bonhaber cycle is a specialized Hess's cycle that is used to calculate the lattice energy of a solid ionic crystalline compound. Okay, so Bonhaber cycle in reality is actually a Hess's cycle, but a more extended form of a Hess's cycle. Bonhaber cycle is a Hess's cycle as well. Is an extended Hess's cycle. So this is a cycle or the energy. This is a cycle. This is uh, okay. This is actually a Hess's cycle and an energy level diagram. This this cannot be specifically called an energy level diagram, but yeah, you can get a rough idea from it for of the energy levels because each of this horizontal line represents a different energy level okay showing that each compound where its energy lies but this is yeah you can call it an energy level diagram as well but it is a specialized as a cycle okay any more questions guys should i continue all right i'll continue then okay so what if we use magnesium yeah magnesium we are gonna come to that example too we are gonna form magnesium in case of magnesium we are gonna first form magnesium positive ions okay that's gonna be the first ie of magnesium and then we are gonna form magnesium two positive ions that's gonna be a second ie of magnesium okay the first and second and so you are gonna show it and uh, you can show it by two arrows or just a simple a single arrow but that arrow is gonna be labeled as first plus second ie of magnesium okay in case of magnesium but we are gonna do an example of magnesium as well magnesium chloride as a cycle anyways now a quick recap of the steps which you guys need to remember okay first you have your uh, elements in the standard state they combine and form your product your one mole of compound and this is called the enthalpy change of formation of that compound okay now once you have the enthalpy change of formation of that compound uh, this is delta hf okay then uh, this solid sodium compound will be first atomized and the other other reactant will all sodium is not a compound it's an element sorry a uh, sodium element and chlorine uh, element they both will be atomized first okay so the first step is atomization then the second step is ionization and third step is electron affinity and fourth step is lattice energy fifth is this delta hf okay now guys since i told you that this is a has a cycle so we can apply the same law of conservation of energy on this von haber cycle as well that we used to apply in as okay i'm gonna do it right over here and it's pretty simple oh, come on okay Right, first of all, this enthalpy change of formation, it, it is pointing downwards, right? So the enthalpy change of formation of NaCl is on one side, okay? This enthalpy change of formation of NaCl is actually equal to, this is forming your NaCl, right? This is forming NaCl. This is one way you can form NaCl, or you could go all the way around to form an acl again hess's law says that the change in energy is the same for a particular reaction whether the reaction takes place in a single step or a series of steps right so now that means that this enthalpy change over here is gonna be equal to the sum of all those enthalpy changes which lead 
to NaCl, okay? So this means an enthalpy change of formation of sodium chloride is gonna be equal to the enthalpy change of atomization of sodium plus the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine plus the first IE of sodium plus the first electron affinity of chlorine and plus the lattice energy of sodium chloride. So this is an equation that you form following the Hess's law, okay? That enthalpy change of formation is equal to the enthalpy changes of all of those steps, right? So this is, this equation is very important, okay? Not just for this bond haber cycle, but it can be applied everywhere on any bond haber cycle. And there have been quite frequent questions testing this concept and testing your ability to form this equation. And then they sometimes give you the enthalpy, this some data, and then they ask you to calculate the lattice energy. If we make the lattice energy the subject from this equation, we can easily calculate the lattice energy. So hence prove that this uh, has a cycle can is this von Haber cycle is a specialized as a cycle that is used to calculate this lattice energy of a particular solid crystalline compound, okay? Now, uh, let's take another example of magnesium chloride. And in fact, the last example, okay? Magnesium solid combining with chlorine gas forms magnesium chloride solid, okay? The enthalpy change of this reaction is gonna be the enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride. All you guys need to do is just construct a bond haber cycle now. So the basics are the same. Okay, I'll go take a few minutes. Magnesium solid combining with chlorine gas. Okay. Enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride is also exothermic. And guys, don't worry, it's gonna be mentioned in the uh, in the paper, whether the reaction is exo or endothermic, okay? Generally, the enthalpy change of formation that they give you is exothermic, okay? Because the product of exothermic reactions is quite stable, okay? So you don't need to worry about this. This data will be given to you. Anyways, magnesium reacting with chlorine forms magnesium chloride solid, okay? So this is the first pathway. And the second pathway is, now you need to convert this magnesium solid and chlorine gas into atoms first. Okay, you can show them by a single arrow as well. Okay, so, but labeling must be correct. Enthalpy change of atomization of magnesium plus enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine. Okay, and if they, they've asked you the standard, so the standard sign must also be labeled over here. When both of them combine together, uh, sorry, when they both, both of them are atomized, they'll form magnesium atom sorry, magnesium gaseous atom and chlorine, two atoms of chlorine. Okay, you've got two atoms of chlorine. So this is actually gonna be twice the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine. This is something you guys should be careful about, okay? You, you are getting two moles of chlorine atoms over here. Now, once you've got your chlorine atoms, the next step is removal of electrons from the magnesium. Okay, now, Magnesium chloride means in magnesium chloride, if you guys uh, look at magnesium chloride, the charge of magnesium is plus two. This means that magnesium has lost two electrons. So this means that both first ionization energy will form magnesium positive ion and then followed by second ionization energy will form magnesium two positive ion. You can show it using two arrows, okay? Each one of them labeled as first and second IE or, or, you could just do this. You could just uh, convert this magnesium gases atom to magnesium two positive ion directly, okay? In the gases state, of course, chlorine atoms are copied as it, as it is. And you can label this arrow as the first plus second IE of magnesium, okay? This would be a better way of labeling because it will uh, occupy less space. Okay, generally, it's, 
not much space is given to draw the uh, von Haber cycle. So you have to kind of squeeze stuff in. So this is going to be a better way of uh, labeling it. Okay. Now, once you and of course the electrons that magnesium have has lost. Okay. Now, once you've got the electrons that the magnesium has lost, these electrons are going to be gained by chlorine. But guys, remember, this is not the second ionization and uh, second electron affinity of chlorine. This is not the second electron affinity of chlorine. This is actually going to be each of the chlorine atom gaining one electron. This would mean that this is going to be twice the first ionization, first electron affinity of chlorine. Okay. Now I'll explain what I just said. Just a moment. Two electrons gained by two chlorine atoms will form two chloride ions, right? Magnesium ions, magnesium two positive ions in the gases form, and two chloride ions in the gases form. So you've got you've gotten two chloride ions, so that's why this is gonna be twice the electron affinity of chlorine because each of the chlorine atom will form one chloride ion, and each of the chloride ion is gonna be uh, sorry, it will form two chloride ions. So therefore, uh, this is going to be twice the first electron affinity of the chlorine atoms. Okay, it would have been the second electron affinity of chlorine if the chlorine, if the chlorine would have gotten a charge of minus two, but that that isn't the case over here, right? Since the chlorine has a charge of minus one, therefore, this is going to be twice the electron affinity of chlorine right so therefore this is exothermic this remains exothermic this is not endothermic okay now once you've got magnesium chloride what do you do next sorry you've got magnesium ions in the gaseous state you've got chloride ions in the gaseous state they'll combine together to form magnesium chloride solid again this is fitting the definition of lattice energy so the enthalpy change of lattice Okay. of magnesium chloride you can label that as well so this is again a bond haber cycle that you've made for magnesium chloride okay and again the same Hess's law can be applied over here as well okay let's apply the Hess's law as well okay so this this step is equal to the remaining remaining steps so the enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride is equal to enthalpy change of atomization of magnesium okay, right over here plus twice of enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine and yeah guys don't forget to mention this standard sign over here plus first and second ionization energy of magnesium Plus electron affinities, twice the electron affinities of chlorine. And plus the lattice energy. Right, so this is the Hess's law equation that you get from this bond haber cycle. Hassan, is your confusion clear? Okay, of the magnesium, magnesium two positive. All right, cool. So any question in this bond haber cycle? Guys, again, the basic steps, the basic steps stay the same. Okay, you form an equation for uh, formation. You form equations for atomization first, then you remove electron, that is ionization, and then you gain electron, that is electron affinity, and then you form your lattice energy products finally okay now let me check what do we have next